Web. I'm GW Pometer. Thanks for coming back to the Hanging With Web Show. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe. Just push that little button while we wait. He can't wait all day, guys. Hit the button already. He's got to go back downstairs. Anyway, we are here at Megacon in Orlando, and we want to thank Fan Expo for having us in here. They've been great. We're hanging today with comic artist and creator Martin Dunn. Howdy. Martin, thanks for hanging no with problem. us, man. Busy man. Busy, Very busy time. All the time. All the time. Huh? All the time. I don't, like, I literally get this joke from friends, like, when do you sleep? And um, so I have this, this pebble watch, and it monitors your sleep, right? And this uh -huh. is a fun little story for you to start us off. Uh, it monitors your sleep. It tells you, you know, percentage of the sleep you got compared to the last night, and all mm. this good stuff, sleep patterns. And um, the other day, I actually slept for about seven hours, and it beeps up when I wake up, and it shows <laughs> me the little thing, and it was like, you slept 48% more than usual. So that gives you an idea of what my sleep pattern, yeah, and then it yeah, tells yeah. you it's like very encouraging. It's like you should do more of this. And, <laughs> like, and how's the convention going for you so far? It's good. It's good. Busy man. Busy. Always busy. It's crazy so many Saturday. People. Crazy Saturday. And we're local, so it's like you know people come looking for us. We're awesome. you know we do all the local shows and all the local uh, um, comic signings at shops and stuff, supporting the local scene and stuff. So, nice. Uh, People just know we're going to be here. It's our home show. Megacon's our home show. Fan Expo's been taking care of us great, so, you know. They are. They're fantastic. And I have a whole family here this weekend. And the fact nice. that, like, you know, Allie's here, my, my wife, who's a comic uh -huh. book colorist, and she's here. She's got it set up next to me. And then my daughter, she's 10 years old, and she's here with her book. And I, We only get to do the show because of the, the little one. Yeah. You know, we, we follow Cosplay Michael around. That's right. all we do. That's, I mean, hey, that's, you know. my, my daughter has, in a year, surpassed my, my fame, in my opinion. She got to do interviews on the Today Show. She's been interviewed nice. by Kevin Smith. She was uh, ranked number nine on Amazon last year, her book. Uh, wow. It was like number thir or number 11 on Comixology. Awesome. Um, sold out. She was a special guest at Yancey Street Comics uh, Free Comic Book Day. She's See, a special guest at Megacon. Now, here's the thing. Here's the funniest part, right? I've been at Megacon. I've been coming to Megacon since 2003. This is the first year that I've ever been invited as a professional guest. Uh -huh. Now, I've been invited, but I've never been invited as a professional comic guest in the pro alley area, right? Awesome. So I'm, this is my first year, right? It also happens to be my daughter's first year. How old is she? And she's 10. 10. <laughs> so 10. She's, Start early. So she's got, like, she beat me by almost seven years. I mean, that's insane. That's, that, hey, that's... That's the way it works. We started the show last year, and I was steady. You know, I have a business uh, mindset. Right. So you, know, you have your one-year plan and your five-year plan, right. okay? And my five-year goal, I said I want to be credentialed out of San Diego or up in New York. Right. That's my five-year goal down right, the road. Right. So we get halfway through the year. We come to MegaCon, and we talk to all, all these great artists and everybody like that. We're working real hard, trying to do our best. I get an invitation to my email for a little cosplay Michael. And, she's, and the woman in the email says to me, I'm putting together a panel for children and families in cosplay, and we want Cosplay Michael to be on our San Diego Comic-Con panel. He's, at the time, he's five years old. Right. I'm looking, I look around at the family, and I said, I'm busting my butt. I'm talking to everybody I can talk to. I'm spreading the word about every kind of comic art. And my six-year-old is on his way to San Diego. That's, I mean, that's, that's on my five-year plan. You're five. Right. It's, it, was in, it was on his six-month plan. It is. Apparently. It's crazy. My daughter, her Kickstarter raised $5,000. That's amazing. I mean, she did, and she did a lot of them. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, how much you help her? And I'm like, are, I, And they're loving her title. I, and they're loving what I, she's well, done. Well, her book is so, like, this is not dad talk. This is a this, comic professional. There you go. Her book is so good. And it's like, she wrote it. She, my daughter's very clever. She wanted to be a filmmaker. That's her whole goal in life. Since she is four years old, she's got a camera running around filming everything. She edits everything or else. Awesome. She makes little movies. She writes scripts. My daughter is, like, hardcore on that. Give um, them the title, guys. It's called uh, Fetch an Odyssey. And she, she came up with the whole idea. Our dog had passed away. Our family dog had passed away. It was very sad. Um, it was very sudden. And she came to me, and she said, uh, you know, why? What happened? And so I gave her a kind of, like, I didn't know what to say. I was, a dad. You had to give her a so dad. So I had to get dad things. So I was like, um, you know, God needed him for a higher purpose. She just looks at me. And my daughter, if you ever meet Evie, she is very, very charismatic. She is very, very witty. She is very smart. You know, like, she's been able to skip two grades already. She is a smart kid. And she just goes, 
why? And I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, God. I've been learning about Mount Olympus in school. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like Greek mythology. I'm like, so Zeus is like God. So, okay. so dad thing. Yeah, dad thing. What are you going to say? She's yeah. seven at the time. So I'm like, okay. yeah, 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 yeah you're gotcha. right, the right, right thing. And Zeus lives on Mount Olympus. Yeah, that's also true. And Mount Olympus is on Earth. Oh, no. No, we're done. I'm just like, uh-oh. No, we're done. Nope. She out logic me and already. And she's like, so we can just go to Mount Olympus and get him back. And I'm like, oh, no, that's, that's not. That's going to be rough. And then she's like, you know, so then she came back a little bit later, and she's like, this is her plan to get him back. And I look at it, and I'm like, that's a, that's a that story. would be a really good story. And then she was like, well, can we make it to a comic? So she's grieving. I'm grieving. My other kids are grieving. And um, I was like, you know, if you want to work on a comic idea, well, let's do it. I, I didn't expect it to go. Any- I'm not going to lie. I did not expect it to go anywhere. She comes back with all these ideas. And I was like, oh, wow, she's really... So then D. Fish, who is a very good uh, personal friend of our family as well, comic artist, mm-hmm. is over hanging out. We were at dinner or something. And she looks at D and she's like, so this is my idea. You're going to draw it for me. And D <laughs> said yes. And I was like, oh, we're really doing... This is really happening. We're like, really that, doing this. This went from like me entertaining my daughter to like, oh, wow, we were really... So then it was like, she wanted to do a Kickstarter, she wanted, and she just orchestrated this whole thing. And so we started calling her Mini Kubrick <laughs> because she was so, and she's like documenting it all, recording everything. That's amazing. But the story is so good, and the wow. dialogue is witty and smart, and the emotion of it, the real emotion that, that she was able to bring out in her writing, it'll make you cry. That's so... And that's an artist in the making. That's an yeah. artist well, she, from, from the beginning. She won... Uh, written since uh, the, the comic yeah. review website, she won their uh, comic creator, I think, and comic rookie of the year awards wow. last year. Wow. Proud dad. So proud dad. Oh, very, very, very proud dad. It, it's it's fun when they follow us into the arts. Oh yeah. It's more fun when they're good at it. It's even For better real. when they're better than you. When they're better than you. Yeah. And so, all right. So let's talk about. Well, she's awesome. Yeah. Obviously. Yes. Uh. But I don't get the interview here yet. So, what started you in the arts? Were you her? Were you that kid, um, or did you? Or was it more of a struggle for you? I think that I think I just I've, I've been I've been drawing and creating stories. I think my first published story I was like six or something, and like I won some sort of writing thing in school, and I'd wrote wrote some story about a dragon and like. Nitrous. My mom probably still has the book. I, I, I it's been it. forever. Yeah, it happens. But I mean, I just, I've always done that. But I'm one of these people. Um, I did the panel yesterday. And somebody had asked the question of like, oh, well, how do you uh, traverse from like one thing and, and maybe you, you know, you're working a daytime job or doing. And I'm like, look, I'm not the right person for that because I'm a very weird anomaly in this world because I don't know a lot of people like me who, from a very young age, I, I when my mom told me that whole thing, you all grow up, your parents are always like, you could do whatever you want. Set your mind to it. I, I took her literally. Amen. So, well, this is like where it goes crazy because it's like I'm 34. I'll be turning 35 this year. In that time, I have basically pursued and met every goal and everything I've ever wanted to. I have been a professional wrestler from the time I was 16 until I forget how old I was. Until I, but I did that every weekend, and then I got hurt, and I was like, this isn't really for me. I'm not really, you know, maybe not athletic enough. So then I started running wrestling shows and I became like a sponge and absorbed everything and I started running wrestling shows. So much so that there is now a documentary out there about my wrestling shows. Nice. Okay, so then I stopped doing that. But also in the time of that, I also was a musician. I was in bands and stuff. And then I went into music, the music industry and I became a major uh, labels producer and engineer. I've worked on major, huge records, gold records, platinum records, awesome. and like that. And then I decided, you know what? I'm not making enough money in the music industry so I'm gonna jump over and start making comics. Everyone who makes comics is laughing their butt off right now. I'm just letting you know. Like, that's a huge oh, joke. Oh, I right know. There. Oh, right. <laughs> look, you, look, as, a, as, as a professional in the arts industry, yeah. we, like to, we like to tell our, because we have a lot of ascribe, right. uh, you know, subscribed aspiring young artists out there. So we like to tell them there are a few words that you rarely hear from an artist in the arts and entertainment um, success, <laughs> profit. <laughs> Uh, you know, these are just words that we don't use well, often. Actually, and success. when we do, they're usually talking about our 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 aspirations yeah. and our inspirations. Yeah, I think success is is uh, relative. Self defined. I think it's relative. I think it's self defined. I, 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 I told myself I'm successful the minute that someone goes and buys a new comic or a new book 
or something they didn't know about before because someone sat in that right. chair, if they buy one, that's all I need, one, because that tells me that somebody was helped by what we do. Right. Somebody was inspired by what we do. Um, when people see your story and they see you, you believed you could do anything, you've done it. Yeah. That's inspiring. It's, so somebody's going to pick up a pencil tomorrow and start drawing. They're going to start writing. And that's going to be you, man. It's that's very, success. It's very funny um, in the inspiration part because I'm very much one of these people that, um, to the public eye, when I do the panels, I, I, I put on a mask. But that's wrestling. I was in pro wrestling. You have to be a performer. Mm -hmm. So I put on like this face and this facade of like ego and you know confidence. And, but I'm an artist, so you obviously know I'm not <laughs> actually that confident <laughs> myself. So then like the thing is, is like um, before uh, you guys came down to get me, there was a guy sitting there talking, and he was just like, Man, they came to your panel last year and inspired me so much. And I'm thinking, and in my head, I'm the wheels turning. I'm thinking, like, I want to say thank you, but I don't know how to acknowledge this praise. Because for me, it's like I'm still trying to figure my stuff out. And you're over here telling me that I inspired you, and I and I hear it all the time where people are like, oh, you're so inspiring, you're so. And I'm just like, look, I, I guess I thank you, but it's more inspiring to me to see that you are just inspired by the fact that I'm working towards something. It is because I. I I, 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 with a with a ten year gap there, okay. Right. At thirty seven, I was with the newspaper. I had just gotten my first newspaper gig. Right. And I thought I would. This is my. This, I will do this for the rest of my life. At forty seven, as far as you know, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're doing the show, and my books are on sale, and I'm happy. Right. With that, um, we're always inspired. Right. As creative people. Anything they do is inspiring. It, it can create a comic. You'll walk out and there'll be three cosplayers in a pose and you'll go, oh, that's my next story. Oh, yeah. That's what you are. Yeah. Um, but when they come up to you and say, you're the inspiration. Yeah, it's so weird. It's off-putting. Yeah. You're like, thank you. I still get weirded out by people yeah. who, who like come up and they're excited about a new issue of like Joshua Black or something. And I mean, I've been doing the book for a while, but it's still very weird where it's like we're on issue, you know, eight and they're like, oh, my God, it's just... <laughs> I'm so excited, and I'm just like, yeah, it's cool. I'm excited as hell. So. Well, they, you know, the Internet, well, they know and they don't know, and they're not sure or whatever. We know that um, you have been successful in the comic industry right. for quite a while. Right. And, um, but you are the great creator of Overwatch. <laughs> You're um, uh, well, a, cre a creative uh, inspiration in, in, I, in the uh, Overwatch um, family. It's interesting. It's a very interesting thing. Um, it's funny how Blizzard sort of swept us under the rug. Um, I, I've been pretty public about the fact that, that when it's brought up to me, that I'm not... Um, I think it, what bothers me, to be mm -hmm. honest, was that when they, when they purchased Overwatch from us, mm -hmm. myself and Javier Lugo, when they purchased it from us, um, it was a very simple request I'd made. Now, there was no in writing. Mm -hmm. It was just like, hey, if you guys... I know you're going to make comics. You make comics of all your properties. Don't forget the guys that made the comic book that you guys then came and, and yeah. purchased the rights from. And so they, they released comics, and we got credits. I've never even opened one of those comics. Wow. So I, and it's funny, like on the way up here, we probably saw 30, 40 cosplayers. And I get hit up with them all the time, like, oh, my God. You well, they've know, seen your name in the credits. I read your... You know, in an interview, or I read, a, uh, my favorite, Bleeding Cool, did an expose on this whole thing, where they were like, look, <laughs> something's fishy in the world of Overwatch. And the reasoning was, if you read the, if you read the, the, the press release they released, it, it never actually says anything that defines one way or the other how that deal worked. Mm -hmm. And so, like, they were pointing out, like, similarities in characters, similarities in concepts and stuff like that. And so we... Uh, sort of just sat back, and obviously there are NDAs in place, so we couldn't say certain things. So we were just sort of like, you know, our hands are tied. And it's been a few years now, so, like, I guess I'm okay to talk about some stuff. Well, I think it's okay. I mean, the idea is that, like you said, you're credited. Everyone yeah. knows that you're there. They know that, that you played a role. Yeah. You know, it is, uh, it, it's one of the fascinating things, and I think it's something that, that the arts community is, is better off for knowing yeah. that... This, well, personally, is, this is what we do. It's I think an art. It's a bitterness creation, to me, but, there's a, but there's a business here. I think there's a bitterness to me on it um, in the fact that I don't feel like we are acknowledged enough in our involvement mm -hmm. of what they ended up using. Um, I don't think that enough people probably realize how much 
we contributed to what became that that property. And not I don't take a credit for what they did on their own in the game. Like that's fine. But I mean just in the sense of like if you look at certain things, you never see like you'll see the things about they had the uh, the, the lawsuit with the Overwatch video game. But you never hear about the comic book side of that mm -hmm. argument. What's I never hear about it. And um, I've seen so many interviews with the guy that created Overwatch. And it always makes me kind of like giggle to myself where I'm just like, oh, well, it's nice that we never get mentioned by the other company. So they must have had a contract that said that they had to be mentioned or something. Yeah, it is. It's, it's one of those things. It, artists, creators out there, you know, when you, this is a business and it's a right. big business. And if you're a creator and uh, we all want our creations to outlive us. Right. A legacy. Um, but we also want people to know that, you know, from here to here yeah. to here is a process and is a big part of the creative yeah, and process. and it's here, too. I mean, it's, it's, it's is, here. It's like everything it's, that comes out of you. It, it makes me sad sometimes because, yeah. you know, you'll see those characters and you're like, Well, oh, I, man, know that, so. I know that out there they know it. I know we know it. And I know we're all grateful for that, that whatever becomes, even from here forward, anything else. Right. We're grateful that someone had to birth that idea. Right. And we're grateful for knowing. Yeah. Uh, and we're loving it. Now, we've talked about your process and your history. We even got to talk about your daughter yep. and her awesome success so Definitely. far. We're so happy about that. So we've come to the part of the show, because we're the Hanging With Show. We're just hanging out. Right. This is the part of the show I've come to, not so cleverly, nickname, clickbait. Right. All right. You know what clickbait is on the Internet. It's I those, do. Those headlines that everybody, you go, yes. sensational headline would be, you know, Overwatch scandal, right? <laughs> uh, okay. No, what we've done is we take we had our own twist on that. I send the girls out. I said, find me some absolutely ludicrous questions, ridiculous questions. Right. I'm going to ask my guest. Your real life answer. Okay. Is going to be the one that makes us the YouTube viral superstar. Okay. As far as he knows, I'm telling the truth. Yeah. All right. So, okay. All right. This favorite one liner or limerick. Oh. Um. <laughs> that's a, that's I don't a, know where that came from, but that's I'm okay a rough with one, it. man. Like yeah. one liner, one, just one liner. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker! Like that's probably Die right? Hard, baby. Yeah, that's right. Like, I think that's okay. probably the best. I guess. Well, you know, people could tell a lot about a guy from what the guy believes in. Yeah. So most likely to be real, aliens, Bigfoot, or the Loch Ness monster. Aliens, probably. Aliens. That's three for three, by the way. Uh, on the aliens question. I have a theory that, like, I mean, I'm not going to go into a big thing, but I have the thing, like, I don't have a, a narcissistic point of view to believe that we could possibly be the it only would, thing. It, it would be incredibly egocentric. The one thing I don't think, the, the one thing I do think of human, of humanity as a whole, our problem with our narcissism and our, our, you know, inward look on it is that we all assume that an alien is going to look like a humanoid in some way. Did it, it is uh, when you live in a fishbowl and the only reflection yeah. that you see is your own. Right. You assume that like I always feel like aliens would be like around us and like particles we don't see or we can't process and you wouldn't even know. Giant space squid exactly. thing. Exactly. Whatever. Uh, okay. They do this to me on purpose. Okay. Okay. And I don't know why they do this to me, but I'm going to read the card anyway. An orangutan walks in holding a big stick and wearing a top hat. What does he say? <laughs> I didn't know orangutans could talk. I didn't either. Oh, oh my lord, have mercy. Where are the women at? Uh, where go. are the women <laughs> at? Okay. And that, that handles the second part of that question, which is why is he there for a girl? That's why we're all here. Where are you going to be coming up the road? Where can people um, find you? And, and I don't, I, it's funny, I don't have anything uh, set up this year. Um, I'm taking bookings from cons, so if any cons see this and they want to book us, like, I'm down. Uh, I've, I've got so much brewing with uh, the Punk House Press launch uh -huh. and the stuff we're working on with that. Now, we didn't get a chance to talk too much about Punk House, but I know that you guys are launch This is MegaCon here, since it's your home con, yeah. is, a, is a nice soft launch and something for the home audience. You could call it that. For the home audience. Yeah. So we started this. When are you guys set? Do you we, think you, we started, you'll so, be ready? We started, so to give you a little backstory on this, because everyone's talking about the Bleeding Cool yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody's um, seen this. They all, everybody, as far as everybody else knows, you guys are ready to rock and roll. Yeah, so we, we did, uh, we started building the infrastructure in February. Okay. Okay, technically August, but then I really started bringing people in, naming, here's our editor-in-chief, this is a person I'm bringing in to do this, here's a person to do this. And we started putting that together. 
Um, we've locked down some really great contracts. We have some amazing sponsors, uh, Bifocal Media, Slope Records, HYM Turntables. Like, wow, you so guys are doing amazing. Uh, Sound Exchange. Like, we, we have so many people. And this is, where it gets, this is where it gets funny. A guy who was working with me, helped us with social media, he, he put it out that this was coming to Megacon. And I'm just like, why would you do that? And he's like, well, I figured we'd have it something ready by Megacon. So then I'm like scrambling to make it happen, and I'm, I'm rushing to get everything ready. And so then we, we put together our, our, our zine, which is one of the things we're releasing, which is it's called Fake News. is a joke on everything that's going hey, on lately. Hey, so hey. it's like fake news, and it's this comics uh, slash like punk culture magazine, music reviews, cool. and comic books, and all this kind of stuff. And so we did that. And, and we have that, you know, this weekend we've either, the, the deal really is if you showed up, come up and you were showing me super, like, huge, thankfully this will be air later so people won't come take advantage of this. Yeah, yeah, no, but, no. But this don't show me a lot of enthusiasm, we'll give them a free copy, like, whatever. Otherwise uh -huh. it's five bucks, but it's like, yeah, whatever, take it. Just take, 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 take. We're trying to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing was, was that because of all of the attention, and, and there's so much more Dina will help on. you with that. Yeah, we've She's, she, so much more content and, and like things going in. Like we had over a thousand submissions. We had wow. you know, all these different things. So I really was just one of those situations of like us pushing to like kind of get a soft launch off the ground because people were so looking forward Wait, to looking, it. Yeah. And then because he had said that, all of our sponsors started talking about it. So then Bleeding Cool was like, hey, we do this interview. And I'm like, for what? And they're like, oh, for your launch. And I'm like, oh my. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, we're here, so soft Well, launch. you're here, you're launched. Yeah. Uh, what, when should we be looking up the road? What's coming? Uh, we're hoping for, uh, jokingly, July 4th. We'll see. July 4th, okay. Hopefully. Guys, we're going to throw some links down below so you can keep up to date on that kind of stuff, the social media links, things like that. Keep up to date on what's going on over there with Punk House Press. I want to, we got to show, we didn't get to show the, uh, the logo off here. So um, we got to wrap it up. As we wrap it up, I want to say thank you so much, oh, thank you. Uh, so much for coming up and hanging with us. I want to thank our partners and friends at Something Unique Magazine, the Florida Book News, Wordfire Press, Space Coast Comics, Famous Faces of Funnies. These folks share the videos all over the World Wide Web. Help us get some exposure, awesome. especially for our indie press guys and our small press guys. Um, we want to share all of our creators with the World Wide Web. I'm GW Pometer. We've been hanging with comic artist and creator Martin Dunn from Punk House Press coming up, guys. There's, there's plenty down the road coming up. Remember, folks, subscribe, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next.